if we don't have query store, we might be able to find more information in SQL Server's execution plan cache. This is a relatively simple query. Sometimes these can get really complex. I'm querying sys.dmexec query stat. And this is only gonna give me information if the plan is in my cache. So it needs to have been executed maybe recently, but it needs to have not been cleared out since it was executed. And it could be cleared out by memory pressure, by someone changing configuration, by someone manually clearing the cache, lots of different things. So I need to have the plan in cache. Right now, I'm looking for anything with query text like tune me. So anything that looks like it might be part of this procedure is what I'm looking for. If I wasn't looking, if I was looking for something that was executed as parameterized queries or ad hoc SQL, I might need to specify part of the query text itself, or I might just need to look at my top queries and try to find it. It takes, a, depending on what you're looking for, it takes a variety of approaches, but I'm looking for right now, it is part of a procedure. So anything that looks like it's part of the procedure, and then I'm gonna order it by worker time, total worker time, that is CPU time. Lucky for me that my code doesn't have a recompile hint in it because that can really mess up how it shows up if it does show up at all in the procedure cache, unfortunately. But since I don't have any of those recompile hints in my code, I actually find a bunch of different statements that look like they're related to my stored procedure. The top one, this statement has been executed five times. On average, it takes over a minute. And on average, it does nearly a million logical reads. And I also can see the execution plan for it. Let's open that plan. And notice that I get the plan for the whole procedure. Now, luckily, I don't get the plan for every single time it followed that loop <laughs> to insert the rows like the actual plan here. So I have, in this case, I have 21 queries but I don't have 100,021 queries here, but I can see, I know which query I'm looking for because notice that my query text in the top row is, I'm looking for, the, the timing for this is associated with the query who starts with select, coalesce, et cetera, et cetera. The plan is for the whole procedure, but I can scroll through and look at each line, okay, what's the SQL there? And I know that the SQL I'm looking for starts with this specific query text. The costs here, remember that these are estimates. The fact that this has a very high estimated cost does not necessarily mean <laughs> that that is the cost. And also, even though I have that trace flag on, the plan stored in the cache only has the estimated number of rows. I got the actual number of rows when I was using SP who is active to look at a query that was currently executing. But this plan can potentially be reused. Plans in the cache may be reused and they don't have a history of what were all of our metrics over all time associated with them, right? Now, query stores got some aggregate information. Query store is different than the cached execution plans. Query store is something we configure at the database level. It will store information on disk and it will store aggregate information over intervals about how things performed. But this is just coming from the execution plan cache. And so we have only estimates about our row counts there. But hey, I do hear in sys.dmexec query stats, this is not an estimated average CPU seconds. sys.dmexec query stats, this DMV I'm pulling from here, it does keep aggregate information about since the time I've been in cache, right? So this can be impacted by memory pressure, by different things that clear out the cache. But since I've been in cache, how much total CPU time have I gotten? And I'm using that and the execution count to figure out, okay, what is the average CPU time you use in there? So, right, so I can get some information from that, which is great. Now, sometimes this is my average CPU seconds here is 64 seconds. I do need to remember if I'm relying on CPU time, hey, sometimes CPU time can be much greater than duration because parallel parts of the execution 
it counts up, it adds up all that CPU time. So in this case, I'm only looking at CPU time, not duration. In this time, like when I'm just looking for, hey, what is the most impactful part of the plan that'll often get me there, it is worth remembering that CPU time can be much greater than duration. They are not always the same thing. All right, well, I think we know what query to work on. So the next step is to start tuning that query. 